area of your life. Something good, something good, something good. Welcome to World Harvest Church. Welcome to World Harvest Church. Bienvenidos a la iglesia World Harvest. Good evening, World Harvest Church. Hallelujah. Come on, we can do better than that. Good evening, World Harvest Church. Are you glad to be in the house? Are you glad to be in the house? Look at somebody and say, I'm glad to have you in the house. I'm glad to have you in the house. That's churchy, but that's all right. We come to honor God this evening. This is night number two for revival. Are you looking to be revived and recharged? Come on, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. That means there's freedom to worship him. There are no restrictions. There's no aisle that you can't run down. There's no shout that you can't look awkward doing. You can open up your mouth and give God a praise like never before, and God will cast no judgment on you. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, let's make some noise. Let's stir up the atmosphere. Let's get engaged in this place. Come on, we serve a risen Savior who's done more than you can imagine. If God never does another thing, he's done enough. He woke you up this morning. I heard the church mother said, and he started me on my way. He put food on my table, and I'm so glad about it. Hallelujah. Yeah. 
bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, just lift your hands in this place. God has given you the power to be more than an overcomer. Hallelujah. Glory to God.
This is your time to just be in an intimate fellowship with the Father, the creator of heaven and earth. Open your mouth and praise him. We worship you. We worship you. We honor and adore.
give you praise, Jesus. We give you praise. Call out the honor. You are our God, the one we live for. We give you praise. Call out the Give you glory, Jesus. We lift up your name, Jesus. We lift up your name, O oh Lord God. We worship you, Lord Jesus. We give you honor, Jesus. We magnify your name. May all the glory go to you tonight, Lord. We give you praise tonight, Lord. We give you praise. We give you glory. We thank you, Jesus, that you are moving supernaturally all over the earth. And I thank you, Jesus, you're going to move tonight in this house. And Lord, we come with expectant hearts, but we come to lift up your name, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. And we invite, Lord, you we love you, Jesus. We want to be immersed in you tonight, Jesus. Be immersed in the Lord Jesus Christ, the anointed one. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Lord, we receive the fullness of all that you have. We receive the Holy Spirit's presence. We receive, we make room for you, Holy Spirit. We make room for all that you want to do tonight. Oh, Lord God. Ula mama rasiala. Ha ha ha. Glory. 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 Glory to you, Jesus. We give the Lord praise. I'm telling you, Brother Kevin, there's a wave up here. Pastor Kevin Benton brought his a whole roof. A whole, a whole, how can I say, tribe. And they fasted and prayed. He told me how much they prayed. He had not eaten like a week. He said, we're just praying the power of God down. I mean, I feel it here. It's going to be electric. In Jesus' mighty, holy name. Hallelujah. Just lift your hands a minute. Just say, Jesus, I receive everything you have for me. I believe this is my night that you will touch me supernaturally from the top of my head to the soles of my feet in the name of Jesus. If I shout hallelujah three times. Hallelujah! 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 Glory! I tell you, it's electric up here. We are so honored to have the people from Tampa, our brothers, ministers, elders, and daughter of faith. Come up here, faith. You gotta see this. Come up here. This is faith. Faith grew up here. She was a, a youngin' about this, but now she's beautiful. You're a beautiful boy. Now, faith, you are, now tell them how old you are. 18 now. Now, she, now she's full of the Holy Ghost. Give her a hand. I tell you what, this is 18. Faith, what's it like growing up with your dad, the Holy Ghost man? Whatever you guys have been told, it's like living with us as a PK. That's what it is. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. But I'm blessed that God blessed me with the father that I have because I know that I can carry it on and pass on the word of God to everybody. He's, he's right. There's a wave up here. God is good. I'm Aren't you proud of Faith? We love you, Faith. All grown up. Beautiful. We love you, baby. Hallelujah. Let's give her a hand as she goes. I love her. Okay, turn to your neighbor. Say it's going to be a special night. Special night tonight.
Praise the Lord. This is a Thursday rainy night, and you came out anyway. Nathan, good to see you. I meant to got you before. I'm so, my, my bad. Um, but I know this is a, this is kind of sweet, joyful, sorrowful type thing. We have to say goodbye to Evangelist Daniel to toy. Hallelujah. No. But come up here, Daniel. Just greet the people. We love past, we love this evangelist. We're going to miss him. I'm so proud of him. He said he just came back from a church. He went up to Kentucky to preach in a church. And uh, that's all I'll say. <laughs> but whatever you have on your heart, and then, but we know you'll be back. And uh, listen, we know he'll be back. And uh, I mean, he's an evangelist, a revivalist, a preacher all rolled up into one. But thank you for imparting into this body. Thank you for answering the call. And we are behind you all the way. Can I tell you, I'm, I'm, I used to hold back, but I don't want to hold back anymore. Amen. Because Bishop told me, Bishop Rick, he says, you should tell the people what you did. Before I do it, you know, just slide a hand and we bless people because we don't want any praise. But he says, no, the people need to know because they're the ones that gave the money. Amen? Well, how many know he needed that truck? We gave him the money for the truck today. Amen? And the money for the other truck, we'll send him. That'll be real soon. So be truck, truck, get that out of the way so he can check that off his bucket list and get other things done. Just go ahead. I'll shut up. Hello, everyone. It's good to be back in the river. And I, yesterday I was in a little town called, I think it's Leach, Leachfield, and I don't know if I'm saying it right, but um, nothing compares to being back here in the church and being with all of you, seeing all of you here. And I know, you know, though I'm in South Africa, I'm a World Harvest Church member. I'm, I'm part of the family. I'm not just a, a guest speaker. I'm part of the family. And like I mentioned, um, your amazing pastors, Pastor America and Pastor Linda. Pastor America has been there from the beginning with me. And um, for those that were at the mission, God, I said that, you know, well, seven years ago, I was out partying, completely drunk. And I fell into an open vision of myself preaching to thousands of people in the African bush about the message of Jesus. And there were just thousands of people. And I woke up the next morning not remembering anything of the night except this open vision I had. And it was just after that, that I got saved. But I can truly say that because of your amazing pastor, I saw that open vision in front of me a few weeks ago. So thank you so much to the whole church, really. You guys have been such a partner. Those souls that were won i mean in the last few months are on your name too because you guys helped us get there and do this campaign amen and i just believe greater things are coming in jesus name i mean i said to pastor merrick when we were in zambia i get up very early and i pray for each team member and when i was praying for pastor merrick yeah let me tell them what happened I heard the Lord said, he's sending his flame to the church of Ward Harvest Church. And every time I think of your pastors of this church, every single day I hear it again. The flame is coming upon Ward Harvest Church. The flame is coming upon Ward Harvest Church. So let's take it by faith and let's go with this flame to the nations. Love you all and God willing, end of January, I'll be back. I might surprise you guys. You never know. But really, thank you so much, Pastor Merrick. And Pastor Linda, if you're watching, thank you so much. And you guys have really been, you've been the most amazing father to me. And absolutely love you. And like I said, 
I would have I would have came here, whether you like it or not, and whether I preached or not, whether you've given anything or not, I would have been here, because I love you guys so much, and you've done more for me than any any preacher I know. So thank you so much. Whoa! We say goodbye, but we'll be saying hello. Amen. And just out of his own mouth, if you want to go to his crusades, he said he'd give World Harvest Church preference. And I'm, isn't that wonderful? But you have to be checked out by me. I will also determine whether you should go on this kind of trip. Hallelujah. Let me tell you what. It's my honor. And Lord, help me do this in a way that will truly be honoring this man of God. Kevin Bitten, Pastor Kevin Bitten, Reverend Kevin, Otherwise, affectionately known as Rev Kev. <laughs> is a graduate of Rod Parsley's Bible School. His best buddy is his, I didn't even know this until later, is the bishop, Joseph Castillo, all the way from China. And we loved him too. We've been down to Tulsa, helped launch his church. Then I found out you're best buds. But if you go to Rod Parsley's school, that's a serious school. You don't play, if anybody knows Rod Parsley. But he come up there, lit, make a long story short, the Lord led him here. And uh, next thing you know, he's on staff. Yeah, play that kind of music. But he was, he was on staff. <laughs> and he was exemplary. He did a wonderful job. And everyone loved you, Pastor Kevin. But he said, I've got to go. He was up in, was in New York. You first went and planted a church. And got it going. As a matter of fact, um, or just out there. Okay. And so, uh, but then he felt led to relocate both. And his wife's a doctor of chiropractic medicine. They relocated to Tampa. And that's been about 10, 10 years. And... He is a preacher's preacher. He, this man really maybe has got two big callings, evangelist and pastor. He's more than just the pastor because he can preach at the drop of a hat. In fact, he'll throw the hat down for you. And, uh, but he's, uh, your passion for Jesus, Reverend Kevin, has always come through uh, as long as I've had communication with you. And he calls me up, what about this pastor? What about this pastor? And I'm supposed to, I'm, I've got to follow something. So you're supposed to come down. I said, one day I will. I will. Before God and everybody, one day I will. Before Jesus comes. But I also said, are you going to come up here one time? Didn't I say that? Amen? And I want you to know, this man is very sincerely follows Jesus. I don't know anybody that is just raw passion. He'll fast. He'll pray. They expect his parishioners to pray. He'll feed the poor. He'll go to any length. Come on, put. I, mean, I just love him. And then, and then he showed me. That's a few months back. A woman came in, completely blind, in a church using a stick. He said, "I felt this presence of God. I knew God was going to do some a miracle. Call her to the front, and just went into the spirit, prayed the power of God down on her." And God opened up her eyes right at the altar. Right at the altar. Uh, but that's how, that's how, as long as I've known you, you've spoken like that. You expect that. You don't expect anything less. And I believe this is a milestone 10 years because what God's going to do, he's going to launch you. And a lot is said about a pastor when he has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, who else is part of the church? Uh, not nine, ten, eleven people. Some came from New York. They drove, they flew, and they kept here just to support the pastor. Brother, come on. Would you all, if, if, if you're from his church, would you stand up? We want to honor you. Come on. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Without any further ado.
the man of God is going to come right now. Put your hands together for Pastor Evangelist Kevin Benton. Come on now. Let's not panic. Let's clap in Jesus' name. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise in the house of God. Come on, you can do better than that. It's a Thursday night, it's raining, and you came to church. Come on. Now, I'm going to try to sing something by myself. If you know it, we can do it. Amen. If not, we'll just move on. Ready? And you might all notice because it's a song by David Crowder. Amen. Good God Almighty, I hope you'll find me. Praising your name. Wait, at the top of your lawn. There's my key. Because I know where I'd be without your mercy. So I keep praising your name at the top of my lungs. Now here comes when you get involved. Tell me, is he good? Tell me, is he God? He is good God almighty. Then we do we go. Praise him in the morning. Praise him in the noontime. Praise him in the sun goes down. Love him in the morning, love him in the noontime, love him in the sun goes down. Good God Almighty, I hope you'll find me. Praising your name at the top of my lungs. Cause I know where I'd be without your mercy. So I keep praising your name at the top of my lungs. Hallelujah, come on! Come on, give him praise in the house of God! Hallelujah, you may be seated. You don't have to get seated. Let's just let the Holy Ghost have his way up in here tonight. But I want to say something about your pastor first. I love this man of God. There's certain people that get deposited in your life. And it's up to you to either learn or just get out the way and throw in the towel. When I came to this church, I was a disgruntled preacher. I was in Columbus, Ohio, just out of Bible college, jumped into ministry, was on the radio every Sunday morning at 7.15 a.m., moved to Atlanta, Georgia with visions. I'm going to start my church revival. It's going to be awesome. And it didn't happen. And I found this place. I was led here. And he, this church loved me. Your pastor loved me. And I just love you, sir. And through being here, working, I called it, I was working for the general. And anybody who's on his staff, you know what I'm talking about. When the general speaks, like E.F. Hutton, you listen. You, you got to try to start to think like he thinks so you can get stuff done because he's going to give you stuff to do and then there's more coming. So you want to try to stay ahead of him. But it's all for the kingdom, though. And then I left here. When I, I, got, I loved it here. When I went to his office and I told him I was, I was almost crying because I didn't want to leave. But he told me one thing that I share with people. He, one day it was right here in this sanctuary. And he said, I was standing like right here, and he was standing facing me. He said, he said, Rev, he, he, he's the one who nailed Rev Kev nickname. And he said to me, he said, we both know you're not here for a long time. But my job as your pastor is to hold the ladder for you while you climb into the destiny that God has for you. Which brings me fast forward to call, my phone calls with him. I remember one time I called him. He goes, hey, so what's going on? I started talking about how many boxes we fed. I said, oh, by the way, I've had threats against my life to kill me. His response was, good, you're doing it. When they try to kill you, you're doing it. And I was like, thank God for that word. Amen. I want to say to him, I want to bring greetings from my co-pastor, Dr. Vanessa Benton, and all the rest of the congregation at World Harvest Worship Center. I want to thank everybody who flew from New York, drove from Tampa, praise God, got in a plane with me. I want to recognize my friend, Dr. Keith Ivey, Pastor Kirk Broxton, praise God. Oh, Mary, praise God, it's so good to see you. Miss Kim, oh, I could go on. But it's just great to be here, amen. And um, I believe we're living in a day 
where we need to get serious about God. See, we, 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 this is a catch to fire. You know, and I was like, okay, Lord, let me, what do you want me to talk about? Let me try to make it relate to fire because it is a catch to fire revival. But I think sometimes we want to play with the fire, but we don't want to be consumed by the fire. Because when you're consumed by the fire, it costs you something. See, you got to get consumed. You got to have your fire burning daily. You got to rekindle that fire daily. See, when you have a fire burning, if anybody who knows about having a wood stove, you probably don't down, maybe in some parts of Georgia here, but up north, you have these things called wood stoves. And you would leave it burning overnight. And in the morning, you got to come down, you got to open it up and either use billows or get down on your hands and knees and blow them hot coals back into a fire. A lot of us, we just want to come in. We want to come into church. We want to get touched with the fire. We want to go home and do nothing with that fire. The fire is not for us. The fire is for them that need the fire. See, and one thing about tonight, see, I'm a pastor, but I love it. My first natural calling is the evangelist. I'm learning how to be a pastor, praise God. And I've learned it's like a, a never-ending class, amen, to be a pastor. And that's why I love it when I call Pastor Huffton because as men, we know we don't ever want to share with anybody that we have questions about anything. But I can call him and I know that I'm never going to get that. Because the devil will tell me, don't call him. He's going to think you're immature and have no respect for you. But if I don't ask and I don't know the answers, I'll never find out to help the people. Amen? Turn me to the book of Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28 and 29. And I'm opening with this, but I probably won't be staying here long because I've got a lot of word I want to get into your spirit. So I hope you guys don't have any plans for breakfast. Amen? <laughs> but you don't know how much of an honor it is to stand on this platform. With this man calling and asking me to come. But I hope tonight you will leave with a desire to be consumed by the fire of God. Amen? Amen. Hebrews 12, verse 28. It says, wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace, whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. See, let's just look at the second line where it says a kingdom which cannot be moved. See, if you're in the kingdom of God, you can't be moved because that kingdom is immovable. But the only thing that can be moved is your heart and the way you sway to and fro from the things that we get attracted to. We get attracted to the goosebumps. We get attracted to the falling down. We get attracted to all that. But what purpose is of that good if it's not changing your life and changing your heart and you're not turning around and getting other people saved and filled with the fire of God? See, we got to be consumed. To, to be consumed, you've got to be combustible material. Combustible material is something, it's only solids, but also vapors like gases that are easily ignited. See, and you know there's people in this church right now. As soon as they get close to the anointing, they are so consumed and they are so on fire. That's because they spend time seeking to be consumed. And like I said, I was, I'm not staying there because I want to go to 1 Kings chapter 18, verses 36 and 39. And I want to talk about Elijah. See, Elijah, I call this the showdown on Mount Carmel. This is where Elijah called the prophets of Baal together. And he said to them, the God that shows up by fire, he is the real and true God. And the Bible says that all day long the prophets of Baal did all their incantations and cutting themselves and their worship and no fire showed up. We find ourselves in verse 36. And it says, and it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah, the prophet, came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art the God of Israel. See, Stop there. We've got to get out of 
the self-centeredness of why we want God to move. We want God to move so that those around us know he's God. Not because, oh, I want them to move so they know I'm anointed and I'm powerful in the movings of the Holy Ghost. That doesn't mean a hill of beans. What did it do for the kingdom? You can flow through a crowd of people, wave your hand and have them fall down, and they wake up and they get back out and they go do the same thing over again with no change. Because it was all about, oh, how powerful I am. I am the weakest vessel on the planet. But you put the Holy Ghost and fire in me, and I'll conquer any devil from hell. And I'm going to be honest with the, the girl who, the blind, got her eyes back. We prayed for her on the Saturday at the food pantry. And we prayed. She didn't get her eyesight back. I was shopping, and I was going over it. I was like, Lord, what did I do? Did I drop the ball? And these are the kind of words you don't ever want to hear from the Lord. Yes, you did. I'm like, oh, I almost dropped the eggs I was checking out. <laughs> yes, you did. I said, how, Lord? He said, you didn't command the sight back into her eyes. So I said, Lord, okay. Bring her back to the church. And I promise I'll do it right this time. Soon as she, I pull her to the church property, they were the first ones there. Church isn't even open up yet. And they're in the parking lot. And I felt the Holy Ghost say, it's on. I called her out. Ministers, we got around her. And we commanded that sight back in her eyes. And that sight came back in the name of Jesus. And I still have the walking stick in our sanctuary as a trophy for the kingdom. But here it says, to go on, it says, Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their heart back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces, and they said, The Lord, he is the God. The Lord, he is the God. That is the purpose for the fire. For people to see that he is the Lord, thy God. When the fire's on you, one thing, I'm not going to get there deeply, but make sure you're not operating in strange fire. Make sure it's the fire of God. It's got to be the fire of God. But if you wreck read before this, you would know that Elijah had him take water. Now, how many know when your house is on fire, what are the firemen going to come and put on your house? They're going to put water on your house because water repels fire and puts fire out. So here, Elijah, knowing what God was going to do, had them put, saturate that sacrifice and that altar three times with water. Saturating the wood. So there's no way possible man could have been involved in that miracle of the fire. So much that the water filled the trench around the altar. Then it says, when the fire fell, it got licked up. Hmm. Reminds me of Acts chapter 2 where it says, tongues of fire fell on them. It's the same fire. It's a consuming fire. You got to run with the fire. You got to operate in the fire. But to be operating in the fire, you got to let him consume you. In a heat of warning, no flesh can dwell in the presence of the fire. So if you sit here tonight... And you say, God, I want the fire. Expect your flesh to rise up. Expect your flesh to come against wanting that fire. Because the flesh knows that the fire will consume and will eradicate your flesh. Now, Elijah called on the fire so that people would know it was God. How many could honestly say when we pray for people, are we praying so that people see that it's God? Or are we praying so people can see how good we pray? 
how, how good we pray. I remember I was in a ministry, working in a ministry called Teen Challenge. And I would start praying for the brothers that were sick and they would get healed. And then they would come to me and they want prayer. And the leader of the ministry said, wait a minute, no, hey, hey, that's got to stop. Because we're going to start having prayer lines in the middle of this, and this is a program. We can't have that. He goes, take their requests and go and pray for them. And when you see that they get healed, don't come back and say, yeah, because you know I prayed for you. See, it's not about us. It's not about how we pray. It's about seeking after God. We're living in a day where Jesus Christ can come back at any time. So he needs us on fire. He needs us going forward with a message of the gospel, but not just a weak, watered-down message, a message full of fire and fury. Come on, give him praise. Say this with me. Say, Lord, consume me. Lord, consume me. Hallelujah. The fire represents the holiness of God. When fire falls, it represents the approval of God. The approval of God fell when Elijah did the sacrifice properly. And then on top of it, oversaturated it with a non-combustible material called water. But there's nothing that God wants to do in your life that anything can stop. Fire consumed the sacrifice, it consumed the altar, it consumed the stones, it consumed the dust, and the fire licked up the water. There's nothing that gets put in your life that the fire of God can't take care of. you got to have fire. You can't be, we can't be these. You mean we need to be wet water walking, Holy Ghost filled fire, baptized, demon demolishing believers in Jesus Christ. Not the ones, oh, I can't pray, I got a headache. You got a headache, pray your way through the headache. If you can't pray your way through a headache, you will never command sight in the blind eyes. God allows everything to happen for a reason, and it's all part of your training. God brought me here to learn how to work for a general so I could turn around and try to mimic what I learned from the general. And this general is a hard act to follow, let me tell you. But the biggest thing I love is this go big or go home mentality. You're going to do an event. And let me just tell you how, see, and I wasn't going to share this, but I'm going to share something that happened to me. My first event at World Harvest Worship Center was right after I spent some time with General Houghton. I just couldn't get any tanks or Vietnam helicopters to fly around my property. But I got the fire company, and I got the sheriff, and I got people to come. And it was our first one, and Miss Kim UPS me some backpacks to help me get to my goal. We gave out 50 backpacks in our first event. I barely, and, and on top of that, we were already doing a food pantry, and I was distributing bread, and I would go to the local churches afterwards and give them the leftovers. I'm pulling in my driveway after the event, and I got this message. This guy called me. Are you that preacher that be giving out the bread? And I said, yes, this is. How can I help you? And he said this. And anybody who's been in ministry, you know, when they say this word, you know they're not happy with you. Well. I was like, oh, no. Here it comes. Next thing he's going to call me reverend. <laughs> well, reverend, I see you had your little back-to-school event up there today. And, uh, well, since you had yours, we're not going to be able to have ours now. And I was like, why? I turned people away. He's like, oh, no, but you know how they are. They'll come get your backpack. They'll come get my backpack. And I'm like, what about building the kingdom? And then, and then if you come from the background I come from, you can't back out of an event the week before. You got too much invested. You got too much time and everything. In other words, he hadn't even gone to Walmart yet and shopped. But the new kid on the block followed the Holy Ghost and put an event together. And that ruffled his feathers. He would ride past the church. I know he was giving me dirty looks every time he rode past that church. But you know what? I don't care. I'm about kingdom business. About getting people saved. You know, we have a food pantry that operates every Saturday. And we do from 50 to, 100, 50 to 75 to 100 boxes, depending on the time of year. Next Saturday, the Saturday before Thanksgiving, we'll be giving out 100 boxes with turkeys and a full meal in it to anybody who comes. But I've had preachers call me, and I shared this with Mandy today. They call me, and they say, Pastor, we see what's a great job you're doing with the pantry. Can I send my team down and see what you do so we can help us start one here? And it's funny when I tell them this. 
If you're starting it, first of all, let's get one thing straight here. We're doing this for the kingdom. If you are starting a food pantry to try to fill your sanctuary on Sunday, it's not going to work. Why, brother? Why? Because you're not doing it the way the Lord commanded it. The Lord says to do it because they need it, not because you need parishioners in your church on Sunday. And then I said another thing. I said a nine out of ten people who come to your pantry aren't going to come to church because they don't want to be recognized as pantry people. So what do I do? I have a Saturday congregation. I preach to them, I sing to them, and give them the gospel. And every Saturday there's an opportunity for salvation. It's about the kingdom and fire. But there's one thing that Elijah did before the fire fell. He repaired the broken altar. He didn't just get up there and pray and the fire fell. It says he got down on his hands and knees and he put the stones back around it. He put the wood in a proper place and he spent time repairing the altar. I believe in here today the reason sometimes in, the, in your lives that the fire is involved because you've got broken down altars and the altars are, need to be repaired. You, maybe you have the, a little piece of unbelief and doubt in there. Maybe, maybe you got a bad experience where someone hurt you and you got some offense in there. You can't get the fire if you're offended. You can't get the fire if you're disgruntled. When I was first starting here and I was disgruntled, I was, get, couldn't get the fire because I wasn't happy where I was with anything. But it took the love of this church to bring me back around. I remember I was grateful every first Friday of the month when we would go down to Safe House. Go down to Safe House. And for me, it wasn't just about giving them food. I remember the one time we went down there and we prayed and there was people slain all over the parking lot outside of Safe House getting the touch of God so they could get changed. And that's what your life needs to be. For you, for you, but for the kingdom. He rebuilt the altar. And how many sometimes feel like you go through fire and it's not a fire that God put on your life? Enemy can bring fire to you too. Enemy will try to put a fire on you to have you give up on God. But how about that story about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? They wouldn't do what the king said. Got him so married that it said his visage changed. His face, he got so angry that his face changed. Put him in the fire. Then he told him to turn it up, I think, seven times hotter to where the people who brought him to the furnace died. Now, Nebuchadnezzar did not expect to see what he saw when he went back to look in the furnace. He said, hey, did we put three boys in there? But I see a fourth as a son of man. And what were they doing? They were dancing in the fire. And, and look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at what it says. And the princes, the governors, this is Daniel 3.27, and captains and the king's counselors being gathered together saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power. See, because Jesus is in the fire with you. And any fire that that enemy has brought on your life can't overtake the power and fire that God has. And he's right there with you in the middle of the fire. But it gets better. Nor was a hair on their head singed. Now, y'all women who use a curling iron know you get too close, you're singeing your hair. Let alone being in a furnace that's seven times hotter. Right? Then, nor were their coats changed, and here comes even better. Nor had the smell of fire been on them. See, when God delivers you out of something, and that fire falls, there should be no remnant of what you were going through. That fire should totally consume. We had a lady come into church, and she had stage four terminal, she had cervical cancer. We prayed for her, prayed the fire. Then I didn't know it was the next day. She had an appointment to go back where they were going to upstage her treatment. And they did another test to find out how far the cancer had gone and spread. When they did the exams, they found that not only was there no cancer left in her body, but all the cells that were damaged by the cancer were restored with brand new skin. That's how I can stand up here and be out of key and say, good God almighty. Yeah. 
Jesus hears all manners of sickness. Jesus hears all manners of diseases. From what I understand, the word says that he's been given a name that's above every other name that has been given, shall be given, and is given. So any name that a doctor has given you is under the mighty name of Jesus. So we got to put that name in its right place, under the feet of Jesus. Jesus, they also say that we are the body, he is the head, and all things are under his feet. So unless we're walking around with detached heads, the same head that's connected to our body is connected to the feet that we stomp all over that devil and everything that comes our way. Hallelujah. The problem is we buy into too many lies, too many false doctrines and theologies, too many denominations. I had a guy the other day, my wife, I help her in the practice. So I I I go to bed about 3, 4 o'clock every day, get back up at 6 or 7 every day. And I was, it was Monday, and someone had told him that I was coming here. And he's like, well, what kind of church is it? Is it Baptist? I said, oh, praise no. (laughs) I said, non-denominational. He goes, what's that mean? I said, we believe the book from cover to cover. And we don't li- allow any doctrines that aren't in the book creep its way in. We don't stand by certain things that we know aren't even scriptural. We follow the word of God. We stand on the word of God. And we believe in the word of God. When you have the fire, there's going to be times in your life where you're going to need to stand on a word. When faith was born, stand up, my beautiful daughter, and thanks for those kind words you said here. I'm going to hold you to them. Come here. Come up here with me, sweetie. Come on. This is my princess. When, come on, walk with me. Walk walk over here. Walk a little bit with me, sweetie. When my wife was pregnant with her, I came home. I was working as an overnight manager in a McDonald's. And I came home. My wife was crying over a letter. And the letter said, She was going to be born with Down syndrome. So when that, when she told me that, I had two options. Believe the letter or say, absolutely not in my house. I called another man of God that's been an influence in my life, and that's Elder Bill Canfield, who's been with Pastor Rob Parsley for years on top of years. And I called him. He said, brother, well, you know what we got to do. And love, he keeps it simple. He said, we're going to take care of this at church on Sunday. Brought me up in front of 5,200 and some people, and we prayed that she was going to be born healthy. But they didn't stop there. See, because a lot of times we leave what goes on here, and we walk away from it. I went to my wife's every doctor appointment, and I went with my Bible. And when they were saying we want to do amniocentesis, I said, we don't need to do that. They're like, why? I said, she's fine because this is what my word says. Those doctors pulled my wife aside. Can you leave your husband home? And here's why I was proud of what my wife said. She said, absolutely not. He's my covering. And now look at her. She healthy. Amen. Thank you, sweetie. So. I believe, I mean, I, I Pastor said, I, I, could, I could preach till the sun come up, but I know we got to be aware of time. Possibly. It is only 716 in Chicago. And it's only 616 in Scottsdale, Arizona. And praise God, it's only 516 in San Diego, California. So we got plenty of time. But I believe that another reason... For the fire not to fall individually is because we're walking around with labels that the devil has put on us. And I'm reminded of a man named Bartimaeus. Now, Bartimaeus, when you research the word Bartimaeus, is Bartimaeus. He was the son of a blind beggar. Sound like a generational curse going on to me. And here's Bartimaeus by the side of the road. Here comes Jesus, king of kings. Walking down the street. 
By this time, word had gotten out about the things Jesus had been doing. And Bartimaeus found himself on the side of the road knowing that his miracle was walking by. He said, I'm getting mine today. And he started crying out, son of David, son of David. Now here come the good friends. Oh, hush up, blind boy. Shh. Don't want to interrupt him. Says he crowd cried even the louder. See, when the opposition comes, you gotta cry even the louder. Then, then you gotta do this. See, I talk about this a lot because it's true. Back then, you wore clothes that identified your condition, identified who you were. Bartimaeus had the beggar. Blind man, beggar wardrobe on. The Bible says that Bartimaeus threw off his coat and ran to his miracle. And he ran to his blessing. The woman with the issue of blood had been a doctor after doctor after doctor. And you research the things they did to her. 12 years, nonstop blood flowing. She heard about a man named Jesus. Once again, she had to walk around with the garment of an unclean, don't know what she has kind of garb. The Bible says that she pressed through the crowd because she knew if she could just get the hem of Jesus' garment, that she would be healed and be changed forever. She grabs out. She touches the hem. And Jesus goes, yo, whoa, whoa, who touched me? Now his good disciples that were around him said, what do you mean, you lost your Galilean mind, bro? These are just Jerusalem. We're all touching you. He said, no, somebody touched me. Because I felt virtue. And I believe, and I believe to this day, that it wasn't her touch that he felt. It was her faith reaching out for the miracle. Because she knew that Jesus was the only thing that could help her. That Jesus was the only thing that could heal her. And she was not going to stop until she was made whole. Because she got sick and tired. There's people in here today. You're sick and tired of how you're living. You're like the scripture that says you're white, but you're whitewashed on the outside sepulchers, but you got dead bones on the inside. You're not doing what you need to do, and you know it. And God's been convicted in you and he's been dealing with you and tonight is the night you can come and the fire will get you the fire will heal you and my god you will be changed hallelujah you may have gone to the doctor and he gave you a report let me tell you there's nothing that god can't do i have an older deacon at our church deacon charles day Interesting fellow, praise God. But they gave him a diagnosis of cancer. And I know he's healed. Because let me tell you, prayed the fire over him, and it was like a thousand volts of electricity shot through that brother's body. He left skid marks on the floor. We had to buff him, I had to get him out. So I know God's not going to touch you like that, and you're not going to get your healing unless... You keep buying into the lie that you're being told. When God touches you, you got to know you were touched. And you got to walk the touch out. Because you think about it. You think that devil wants you healed? You think he wants you uh, free of that spirit of infirmity that he's put over you? No, he wants that spirit of infirmity to come back and try to convince you that that was just all a bunch of fake. That wasn't real. You didn't feel what you felt and get you all thinking about it. God can do whatever God wants to do. And I choose to let him. Amen. Amen. So the goal of our life is to be consumed. Not just by the fire of God, but by God Almighty himself. Because there's times where you need the peace of God and not the fire of God. Sometimes we get so type A of what we want. And we don't want the rest of the attributes that come with being a follower of God. 
You guys are blessed beyond measure to be part of partakers in this house. Do you realize how anointed this house is? How much favor and faith your pastor has? He's like, to me, he reminds me of Rod Parsley. I heard stories of Rob when they were trying to, to build the, his church. He spoke the, the steel beams into existence. He spoke everything into existence. That's the kind of pastor you have here. I remember another thing he told me one time. He said, he looked at me. He said, let me pray with you. I said, why, pastor? He says, because I can see your Holy Ghost meter. And you need more Holy Ghost today. Let me pray with you. I said, okay, sir. My tank, and my tank was low. We've got to constantly be repairing the altars of your life. Every time the doors of this church are open, be here. You never know what you're going to miss. People come to church and then the miracle happens for somebody and they miss it. And then they come back expecting it to happen. God doesn't, is not promised or guaranteed to do the same thing twice in any way, shape, or form. So you want to be wherever he is, whenever he is, or doing whatever he's doing so you don't miss a thing. And I remember, and I'm going to have to wrap this up so we can start praying for people. But I remember I would be called in to do healing meetings. In Columbus, Ohio. And the pastor would call me. He goes, I don't understand what's going on. All these people are calling saying they're not coming. I said, why not? He goes, back problems, neck problems. All these things that God was planning on healing that night was keeping them away from the miracle that God had for them. See, a lot of times the devil knows what's coming. The devil knows he's done. He knows the whole book. He knows everything about Jesus. He knows where he's going to end up. And his job is just to try to wreak havoc and hell on earth on the body of believers and try to keep you sick, suffered, depressed, and tormented. It's time we stand up. We shake our fists at that devil. And we say, no more. Because remember, a lot of us like to say, oh, well, I'm going to resist the devil and he's going to flee. But then that devil going to say, but you ain't submitted. I don't have to go anywhere. And I really, I wanted to come here with a full fluff, fluff, healing, rah, rah, power message. But God changed it today. I walked in this building, and I turned to Vance. I said, I felt it come on me. I've been feeling it come on me. I've been fasting for 40 days. Not the whole water fast, one meal a day for 40 days. But that's, that's cakewalk. Because I'm training my people at our church on the first, I got it from pastor, the first whole first fruit offering thing that you guys do here. Well, I do a first fruit offering of fasting. And we fa I, I, now I also have common sense. I know New Year's Day there's going to be lasagna, ham, roast beef, and all that good stuff. So I know why am I going to put myself through that. So on January 2nd, I fast until whatever day Easter falls on. Boy, that's like rolling the dice because sometimes Easter's way late in April. That's a long time to be fasting. But let me tell you, it's good for you. When you want to go to that fridge and grab something to eat, and you go, oh, oh, yeah, water. <laughs> Let me go pray. And I'm encouraged when people get behind what you're doing. This young man, stand up, Ray. Come up here. Come feel some of this. Come feel this. Come feel this. Because this is your future, bro. This is your future. This young man, whatever I say I'm going to do, I'm with you. Fast with me January 2nd to whatever day Easter falls on. I was at church, and I mentioned that pastor invited me to come here. And he said, Pastor, I'm going even if I got to pay my own way. That's what we're doing. You got to raise up the young ones. And not just of age. The new believer that's 45, 50 years old comes into this church. They should be raised in the love and the power and the fire of God. And I know you guys know how to do that because I experienced it. Rob Dozier, how did you sneak in the back and I didn't see you? 
Pastor, I don't think you notice. Rob Dozier. I was coming to this church, and like I said, I was an unhappy, not preaching preacher, and I wanted to preach. That man right there, he would stand in that row, and I'd be over there, and he'd go. And I'd like dodge out that way, dodge out that way, but he consistently showed me love from a guy. You know, us guys, it's hard to receive love from other guys. It's not macho to be hugged. Brother wrapped his arms around me and loved me. He's come down to Tampa to be go to a Falcons game with me. Praise God. Go dirty birds. But you got to keep, like in Leviticus 6.12, you got to, at 6.13, you got to keep the fire burning. I believe tonight in here, there's people afflicted with many different things. Depression, anxiety, abuse when you were a child, been burying it. God wants to pour out his fire on you tonight so you can be changed for the good. Now, when the worship team comes up and we start praying, if you're just coming up for the bumps and the fall and the, well, then you're going to go home and you're going to wake up the same way you came. But if you come desiring and say, you know what, this is a pivotal moment in my life where whatever I have in my life, I want change, and I want that change now, and I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm sick and tired of going through what I'm going through, and I want to trust the good God Almighty, the Lord Jesus Christ, to touch me with his fire so I can be permanently and forever changed. Then that's what this is all about. But first, I want everybody in this here to bow your head for me. You see, we sit in church, and we sit next to somebody, and we take it for granted that they're saved and that they know Jesus. We take it for granted that they may not have gone through something in their life that has drawn them away from their relationship with God. So I want to say this to you today. If you do not know beyond the shadow of a doubt, and you're not 100% sure that if Jesus Christ were to burst through those clouds right now, right here, that you would meet him in the clouds of glory, and you cannot confidently say, I would be with him, you need to raise your hand right now because the hour is short. Maybe you've been going through a catastrophic event in your life that has just torn the whole framework of your life down and you were trusting God and it didn't happen the way you wanted it to and all of a sudden you find yourself in despair and you're not, and you're, and you're not following God as like you're used to and today will be the day that you know you're not on fire, you know you need to fire and you want to recommit. You, you're, you're, you, you believe in Jesus and you said the prayer but today the fire isn't burning like it was and like it should be and you want to say today I want to make a commitment to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and I want him to consume me and set me on fire and get me back in a good standing relationship with him. If there's anybody in here under that, raise your hand. And don't be embarrassed. I see those hands. Don't be embarrassed. Is there anybody else? I see that hand. If you don't mind, those who can't raise your hand, I'd like you to come to this altar and say a prayer in front of, make a stand-up commitment to because the Bible says if you're ashamed of him, he'll be ashamed of you. So you might as well just get up. Come on, you raised your hand. Nobody's judging, right? We're not a judgmental body, right? We're a loving body. I want you to say this with me. Praise God. I love young ones. Praise God. My, my friend, God's got something special for you. God's got something, something really special for you. I see like a prophetic heart of David on you. I see you even as a young man are touching people. And after tonight, your life is never going to be the same. So those here, I want you to say this prayer with me, then I'm going to pray for you. 
Say this, Heavenly Father, I thank you for your son, Jesus. Jesus, I have wandered. I have left my passion for you. But here I am tonight to reclaim it and ask you, Lord, consume me, change me, and fill me with your fire. And Lord Jesus, I thank you for what you did for me on Calvary. In Jesus' name. Lift your hands, my brother. Lord, I thank you for this young man. your hands. Fire! 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 I'm fighting fire! It's been a long road. It's been a long, winding, and bumpy road. I hear the Lord say, look at me those who have mistreated you those who have beat you with their tongues those that have judged you since you were about seven eight years old you did nothing to deserve that and I hear the Lord say you are my child and I love you and I have a plan and a purpose from you so I pray today that you spirit of low self-esteem come out of her now. Fire in Jesus. Fire. I don't care if you're a pastor, a bishop, a deacon, a so-and-so. God wants to change your life tonight. God wants to change your life tonight. Is there anybody else? You're sick in your body. Fire of God can cure your cancer. There's no better chemo than the fire of God. I remember one time I was praying for a man who had diabetes. This is when I was a property manager in, uh, over there in Dunwoody. Still the disgruntled non-preaching preacher. I walked into his apartment and he was on his bed. And I knew nothing about diabetic numbers. He said, I said, what, what's going on? He goes, Oh, I'm, I'm going, I'm about to go into shock. My numbers are 456. I said, okay, let me pray for you. So I prayed. And I said, let the blood sugar numbers go back to where they need to be. And he took it. I said, take your blood. It was 117. So I didn't know nothing about the numbers. I was going for zero. I said, I said, I said, let's pray some more. He goes, no, brother, you're going to kill me. So I'm telling you, I feel the Spirit of God stirring. I mean, I feel, oh, folks, I feel them. You, my friend, come with me. I need to tell you. And when you were speaking on the coffee talk, there was an anointing, especially when you spoke of Reinhard Bunke. And I had to tell you that you will have the crusades the size of Reinhard Bunke. Matter of fact, it's not going to be too far down the road. Because God, see, Pastor Huffton, when he puts his stamp approval on you, that's Almighty God through the man putting the stamp of approval on you. See, I don't know if we're allowed to have a bucket list as preachers, but I just, this is one of my bucket lists. When I left here, I said, Lord, you set it up. As long as I have to wait, you set it up. When the phone call came, I was here. You don't even know the depth of the anointing that I have on you. You're not just a carrier. You're a bearer of my anointing. You're a bearer of my anointing and fire fire 
Come on, what? Come on, come on. Get to this altar. Form a line so my new Siamese twin can be by my hip and we can move. Come on. Which side you want? That side? All right. Are you prepared or are you cause? We'll give them cause to somebody else right now. You have a Martha spirit. You're very busy. You're very busy and work. And you've been asking for the Mary spirit. Here it is. Fire! And look at me. That struggle that consumes you in the middle of the night, 3.13 in the morning, right? 3.13 mm -hmm. in the morning wakes you up every night. I'm removing it. Fire! Fire. Receive it. Don't even pray. Just receive. There it is right there. There it is. Don't think about it. Receive it. You're another that has such a low value of yourself on the inside. When you go home at night, you don't understand why people even like you. But what you don't understand, what they see is they see my son living in you. They see the creation that I formed in your mother's womb. And they see the heart that you have for other people. That is the devil lying to you to try to keep these hands from doing the work. That, that mission, that project that you put on the shelf been on the shelf. It has dust on it. God says pull it off the shelf, blow the dust off it, and pray fire over it. You see these hands? You have said, Lord, touch me so I can lay my hands on the sick and they shall recover. Don't let her go down yet. The Lord says that I have heard the intentions of your heart. And when you have to go visit people in the hospital, family member, friend, relative, it breaks your heart that you can't just walk into those rooms and lay your hands on people. The Lord says, I am going to put such a strong anointing on you. All you got to do is walk past the door and pray. Fire! Fire! You just need a drink. Fire! You're better off without them. You hear me? Look at me. The Lord says you're better off without them. They were holding you down. I have new things for you. I am going to take you to an inner room of intercession for this house. It's an answer, isn't it? Wash your hands. Say this, say, Lord, consume me with your fire so I can pray your fire down on this ministry, in this house. diagnosis is incorrect I am your healer I am your deliverer stretch your hands towards heaven as high as you can reach it. like you're looking for the top shelf of something and you just can't reach it. I hear the Lord say that is how you reach out to me every day and I will rekindle your fire day after day and there's people, I, I see people that, that, that like hover around you. You just start.
starting to give thee the good and starting to get the glory. And there's these people like the little dogs around the vine stealing the fruit. The Lord says, I am going to next seven days. Mark it on your calendar right now. Seven days from today, I am going to reveal to you those that you need to cut loose. Because they're holding you down like baggage and dead weight. And where I'm taking you, you don't have no time to be dragging your feet. not weak in a way to get down and pray just like a week like I just want to give up sometimes you even contemplate life is just too tough why bother the Lord says I have too much for you to live for so I bind that spirit of depression and I bind that spirit of suicide and I say come out fire 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 sometimes at night when you pray you say Lord I believe I'm doing everything right but why does this keep happening to me why does all this go on and I hear the Lord say because I'm grooming you for helps ministry because you can't help anybody if you haven't been anywhere and I'm allowing you to go through what you go through because I am going to use you to change the lives of those from 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, all the way up into their teens, and then even the elderly. It's all for a purpose. For I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you and give you hope and a good future. Fire! 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 That growth is gone in the name of Jesus. Fire! Hear the Lord say, don't let anything hinder your worship. 
nothing hinder your worship. Your worship in me is the key. I see right now, I see a bunch of keys and I see a lot of locked doors. And they're not locked, they're not doors of say prosperity and, and abundance and finances. They are locked doors of spiritual growth and enrichment. See, because I have a purpose and a calling on your life to reach people. But if you will let the flame of your worship be drowned out by the circumstances of your life, you'll never get there. I hear the Lord say, don't let your circumstances dictate your situation. Let your situated position in Christ dictate what happens in your circumstances. Fire! Lift your hands. You like to dance. You have a praise dancer calling on your life. You're going to dance. You're going to do spins in front, right up in here. I don't know when. I don't know how, it's not my job. My word is to be the mailman. And the mail for you today is that you're going to dance in the spirit. And you're going to spin. And waves of the spirit are going to flow. And people are going to get healed and touched by the dance. Because what you don't realize is the prayer dance is a prayer of breaking off chains. Not only off yourself, but off those who are engaging in the prayer. So when you're praising and dancing, you're breaking chains. That school, you're getting accepted. You're going to go to school. You're going to learn the praise dance. You're going to learn technique. You're going to learn how to minister to people through your dance instruction, through your dance classes that I am going to ordain and arrange, says the Lord. Fire! Fire! Good day, Shantai. hear him say this get back in the closet you know what that means get back in the closet remember four five maybe six months ago you would go into that closet and you would come out and go my where did all the time go because you were so enveloped in my presence says the Lord See, I'm calling the saints back into my presence because the time is getting short and my son is coming back. And I need people to be in the presence and get people filled with the Holy Ghost and set them on fire. And that they can go out and get the rest of the unsaved people saved. And that's what happens in your closet. Jesus withdrew himself and prayed and then he came out with the mission for the day. When you go in your closet, remember when you used to go in your closet, your day was organized, your day made, made sense. There was any, any kind of problem came up, you had a remedy and an answer because you had already spent time with me in your closet, says the Lord. Go back in the closet, lift your hands, but the encounter starts now. Somebody take that clock off the wall, please. No, I'm just kidding. There you go. Electricity. Totally heal from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Don't let her go. Spirit of infirmity, I speak to you. Out! Fire! In Jesus' name. Blood levels back to the way I created them, says the Lord. Fire, fire, fire! You deserve the glory. Hallelujah. These hands. You know what it is to do hard work. You know what it is to be a servant. And I hear the Lord say, you have proved yourself faithful. Look at me. Look at me. When them thoughts of giving up and just becoming a pew warming person tried to overwhelm you, you put your feet in the ground and you said, not me. And you kept doing your tasks for the kingdom. 
God wants you to know, look at me. Everybody struggles. Everybody goes through doubt and unbelief. But the ones who rise up and tell doubt and unbelief to get out, they are fit for serving in my kingdom. And I am authorizing and issuing you a decree to lay your hands on the sick, preach the gospel, and baptize people in the Holy Ghost. Fire! Fire! I see a lot of numbers going off in your head. Counting, and finances, and numbers. You go to sleep thinking about numbers. You wake up thinking about numbers. The Lord says, I want you to think of one number, three. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Let me manage all the numbers. Let me manage all the affairs. Let me show you where that money's been running out the door on you. And when I show you, make the moves that I tell you to make. Do what I tell you to do. And don't let money and numbers get in the way of me and you, says the Lord. Say this to me, say, Father, consume me like never before. Set me a fire right now with your Holy Ghost. Fire and rain on my life. I hear the Lord say too, thinking things out is good, but to have too analytical of a mind will hinder your faith. Sometimes faith is exactly the substance of things hoped for and the evidences of things unseen. Sometimes you'll have to believe something without seeing it. You're going to have to see what you believe and not believe what you see, says the Lord. So if it hasn't happened yet, you just keep believing because it's coming. If it hasn't happened yet, I may be moving some mountains. I may be doing this, but it's going to come to pass, says the Lord. Now have a drink. Joy. psalmist you have the heart of David life wasn't always good for you though five six years old you pretty much raised yourself on the streets you know what it's like to be hard but God's been softening you through his worship and I hear the Lord say, I am going to answer your prayer for full-time music ministry. But hear this. I am going to hold you to what you said to me. I will do it for you so that people can be touched through my music that you give me. Through the songs, through the music. Don't get your eye off the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus, says the Lord. You focus on me, and I may produce platinum albums through you, but remember me. Don't touch my gold and don't touch my glory, because once you do, I will remove it, says the Lord. But I am about to put songs in your spirit that will be so anointed that it will flow through wherever you go. Songs that when they're played on the radio, the Holy Ghost will come in people's cars and they will get drunk in the Holy Ghost. Fire! Fire! My child, everybody is worthy of my presence. Everybody is worthy of my presence. I desire, the Lord says, I desire today to set a fire on you to rekindle. Because look at me. There was a day. So really look at me. There was a day when you were such a fireball that people couldn't be around you because it was either get burned or get out the way. And through life on life's troubles, on broken relationships, on unanswered prayers coming, your fire has almost gone totally out. But the Lord says today, I reignite fire! 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 
You spirit of oppression. You spirit of oppression. Look at me, spirit of oppression. You come out now. In Jesus' name. You get under the name of Jesus and let her go. Open your eyes. No, no, I told you to open her eyes. Free. 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 And Lord, I thank you that you close any the door that brought this in. Free. Free. Fire. Fire. He knows what you need. The, the internal pain. It's tougher than the physical pain. And I hear the Lord say, total overhaul. Fire! Fire! Utu kushin da 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 ba ba ba. Yeshua, ashe kalabase, randa shate, tururubu kushita da ba ba. Rondo, 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 rondo. Look at me. Look at me. Your past is your past. Therefore, anyone comes into Christ Jesus, they are a new creation. All things are passed away and all things become new. What you did before you met my son, says the Lord, was then and this is now. You are free. You are my child. You are my son. And anybody tries to remind you of your past, you say, get thee behind me, Satan. Fire. Redeemed by the blood of Jesus. Come back to you. My new best friend. Hallelujah. Look at me. I says, I have not given you a spirit of fear, but of sound mind of power and of love. And the Lord says, the only love that matters is my love I have for you. You don't have to prove yourself to anybody. You don't have to try to win the affections of other people. Because I love you, says the Lord, and I am fully satisfied with my creation. Spirit of depression, spirit of anxiety, and diagnosis of bipolar disorder. You come out now! Fire! Fire! Free! Free, free, free. Loose her, loose, loose in Jesus' name. Look at me, look at me. You bipolar foul spirit, I say, come out now, now. You took koshiarate, baby. Fire. We bind mental disorder diagnosis and we lose the mind of Christ. Peace. Now have a drink. There it is right there. Koshita da baba, sete ta da 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 ba. It's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. may feel like a heartache that you can never get over right now but I the Lord says I'm healer of all things sometimes it may seem like we're hurting because of something we did but what the Lord says and you need to look at me I removed them they were going to slow you down they don't understand hunger and fire for God. So tonight, I pray. Fire! 
the end? All the way to the end? All right.
got to be careful what you say because you're going into the bush and you're going into places where you're going to have to do nothing but trust on God. And then you said this. You said, Lord, I want to be like Elijah and I want you to have the ravens feed me. I'm about to call you on your word, says the Lord. I'm going to put you in the bush with pygmies. And you're going to trust in me. And I'm going to provide for you. And the more I provide for you, the more you believe with me and in me. And there's going to come a day where you're going to stand in front of a pygmy witch doctor who has control over that whole village and community. But because of the way I fed you in the, in, the, in the wilderness and in the bush, you're going to stand in front of that witch doctor and you're going to say, fire! very young child look at me look at me see how you feel right now that's because it it knows it's coming out no you're not going down yet it's not happening yet you're staying up you need to look at me you need to look at me open your eyes look look at me look at me when you were a very young girl some things were done that caused you pain and you've been thought and bought to believe that you were responsible for it. But that is not the case. And I am going to loose you from those nightmares. And I am going to loose you from those memories. And I am going to loose you from the tormenting pains and emotional despair. Fire! Free! Lord, send me and I'll go. Isn't that what you said? Huh? Isn't that what you said? Look at me. Isn't that what you said? Lord, send me. I'll go. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. You already have to have, and you've already thought about this, and you're like, nah, nah I don't need to do that. You need to have a bag packed in your closet, ready to go on a moment's notice. Because when I call and I send, you need to be ready. Fire! 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 Free! Because look at me. Literally, there are lives where the balance of their life and their soul and eternal destination is balancing between heaven and hell. But I need you ready to go because you're the one to touch them. Fire! Look at me. It's okay to love Jesus. It's okay to love him. Matter of fact, it's a good requirement to love him. Sometimes, to no fault of our own, we allow certain environments to surround us. There's a song, and I can't sing it because I'm not a singer. I was a guitar player. But it says... When I'm surrounded, I'm surrounded by you. When Elisha, their camp was surrounded by an enemy host. And he said, Lord, I pray that you open their eyes that I see what they, they see what I see. And when he opened their eyes, they saw that the enemy that was surrounding them was surrounded by chariots on the mountaintops. The chariots of Almighty God were surrounded. You feel like you're surrounded and enveloped with problems and despair and anxiety. But the Lord says, I surround you with my presence. I go before you. I go behind you. I go alongside of you. And I'm within you. Fire! You know what it is to worship. You know what it is to praise Him. Four days ago, you said, Lord, I'm tired of the level that I'm at. What do I need to do 
to go to the next level. And he says, be willing to do what I tell you, to love me with all your heart, all your mind, and all your strength. And do not buy into the distractions that the devil has placed around you. One by one, as you search for me, those distractions will be removed. And you already know who they are and what they are. God says, I'm removing them. But some of them, matter of fact, the most powerful one, you're the one who has to do the removing. Because you have to want to be free so I can use you. You have a calling, my sister. You have a powerful calling. Prophetic realm calling. And that's why the devil's been snuffing you, keeping you up. And you haven't slept good in weeks. Sometimes you're afraid to go to sleep because of what's going to happen when you close your eyes. But the Lord says, tonight, I give you peace. And I give you rest. In Jesus' name. Peace. You're a micromanager. You manage the manager, and then you remanage the manager, and then you tell the other manager to manage that manager. And you're managing, 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 managing. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. See, he can't make you lay down in green pastures and beside cool waters if he's not the Lord of every area of your life. So sometimes when we feel the need to manage, what well, best way to manage is to give it to the Lord and let the best manager in the business handle them. Because remember, you're dealing with human beings. Come here. No, no, no. Not yet. Not yet. Turn around. Not yet. Hold on. Okay. We'll go this way then. No, 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 no. Keep dancing. See, this has been a struggle for a long time. And the Lord says, if you will surrender your whole life to me right now, I am going to elevate you to a place where you won't have to manage. I will be your manager. My thoughts will be your thoughts and your thoughts will be my thoughts and my thoughts will come to pass in your life if you commit your ways unto me. Fire! Fire! Hushaba. Similar to the young man down there, your past does not dictate your future. You see, remember, remember the, the movie with Timon and Boomba? And remember when they found Simba laying on the ground? And Pumba said, oh, he's a little bit of a fixer-upper. Well, God is a fixer-upper kind of God. And let me tell you, the depths of the muck and mire he pulled you out of. You hear me? The depths. You were up to here. You were about ready to drown. And that person came into your life with that track and told you about Jesus. And you started to question and started to believe. And then you gave your life to my son. And it has not been the same ever since. But you keep getting burdened and bottomed down with the lies of that devil about your past. Who the son sets free is free indeed. No questions asked. Lift your hands. So right now, are you serious about a future with God? Are you serious about serving Him? Like you said, I'll serve you, Lord. I'll go where you tell me to go. I'll do what you tell me to do. Did you mean that? And you said that, right? Yes. So tonight, you're going to repeat what I say? You trust me? Say, Lord Jesus, I'm done playing games. I'm done hiding in the shadows of my relationship with you. I come out of the closet. 
I come seeking. And I want more of you than ever before. And I want to have more tomorrow than I have today. I commit myself right here, right now, to love you, to serve you, and to surrender to you. In Jesus' name. Now doubt, um, um, this is me now, doubt, unbelief, insecurity, low self-esteem. I speak to all of you right now. No, don't, don't twitch your eyes on me, look at me. I speak to all of you right now. And I say, you let my brother go now in Jesus' name. Come out, be loosed. Fire, 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 fire. fire! from your belly fire Seventeen years of torment in your emotional life. The hand that hurts you. The tongue that hurts you. Do you want to be free from those memories? Do you want to be free from that? 
find themselves in a pit where even the husks, the husks that the pigs are eating are better. They know that, they're, that they could have better where they left. The Lord says if you train a child up, they won't wander far from the path. All the training, all the laying on of hands, all the prophesying in tongues while they were sleeping in the middle of the night did not fall on deaf ears, did not fall and not going to be coming to fruition. I am going to bring it into pass, but they're being molded and they're being made ready. And when I release them back, do like the Father did. Wrap your arms around him. Do you know why he wrapped his arms around him? It wasn't even just because of he loved him. He was protecting him from the punishment he should have gotten for what he did. And, and then he said this. He said, go get that robe. Zen Proton, Zen Proton. That robe, the robe that he had on as a member of that family was hung in a significant place because the father knew that the son was coming home someday. And when he came back, he put the robe on him. The Lord says, I have a robe for you tonight. A robe of peace. This is how I fight my battles. This is how you need to sing this. You know it? This is how I fight. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. And this is how I You're not on a dead end, a dead end street of life. Look at me. Your life matters. You're not on a dead end road. It may seem like everything is halted and stopped right now. And it's frustrating and confusing. But I'm at work, says the Lord. I'm moving things. I'm shaping things. I'm giving you direction and guidance. So that one day you can step on the gas and go where I'm telling you to go in the name of Jesus. Sometimes we're in a holding pattern like a plane waiting to take off or a plane waiting to land because the runway is not clear and I can't bring you in safely. That passion that you have to do that thing for me is not ready yet. I'm grooming you, but I'm placing people that when the grooming's done, they can lift you up and pull you forward into the future that I have already predestined for your life. Lift your hands. 
You've been real dry and emotional over the past couple weeks. Sometimes you don't even know why. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, you just feel blind. You're one minute you're in a good mood, and the next minute, all of a sudden, you just don't want to be around anybody. You don't understand what's going on. The Lord says, I will give you peace. A peace that no man can rob. No job can steal.
it stops in Jesus name your work will not be hindered your work will flourish and the kingdom of God will grow because you are loosed in Jesus name you're supposed to be going and you know that direction you've kind of took a path away the Lord says tonight do you want to reestablish the walk we had do you want me more in control of your every movement see because you are one person that your success in whatever you try to do hinders directly on how much you trust the Lord with me say Jesus I trust you and I want you to be my Lord to be my Savior to lead me to guide me in all my ways and Lord I believe that you died on the cross for me and I believe that I am yours and you are mine and I thank you Jesus for saving me
with every breath that we are able oh we will see of the goodness of god your goodness is running after is It's running after me, oh great the war, your goodness is running after, it's running after me, your goodness is running after, it's running after me, your goodness is running after, it's running after me. It's running after me. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say. I hear a word of warning. When this supernatural anointing starts to manifest in your life, do not get distracted by it and forget about the primary purpose that you've been placed in this church is to be the executive assistant for that man of God over there. That is the reason, because of the way you have served, is the reason that I am putting this anointing on you. And the more you serve, the more anointing. In the name of Jesus. You have the best position of anybody. Because you get to get imparted. Do you realize when my servant gives you direction on how to do something, I am imparting my godly wisdom into you so that you can operate and function in the gifts that I'm about to bestow upon you, says the Lord. from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Fire! Sure. Don't resist it. Lift your hands. Surrender. Just receive it. Peace. Spirit of confusion and uncertainty her leave her in the name of Jesus fire keep pressing in how much to see keep pressing in even until when the, what you're pressing for doesn't show up. I hear the Lord say, keep pressing. You hear me? He says, keep pressing. I'm in the pressing. And while you're pressing in, don't get bothered by some of the pressing I put on you. 
Because when you're pressing in and I'm pressing you, I am actually removing the things from you that would hinder my move in your life. Keep pressing. Lift your hand. You know, one thing that impressed me about this church when I was here and just impresses me to this day is how this man over there, his whole family, serves the Lord in this church. I am about to give you the interpretation of tongues that you've been asking for. Lift your hands. Because what I'm about to bring to this house, because where glory comes, the adversary tries to sneak in. And I'm going to give you the gift of interpretations of tongues so that you can stand up and say, that is not what the Lord said. And then say, and then it will end with, thus saith the Lord. And I am also in that gift. You will interpret your own tongues. Fire! Fire! And you work so hard, have some rest. Peace. Receive it. Have a drink. Have a drink. Have a drink. just as important as anybody else. You hear me? You are just as important. You guys are one huffed in body with one Christian purpose. Amen? Doesn't matter who's the thumb and who's the foot or who's the hip or who's whatever. You're all part of the huffed in body that serves the Lord. Amen? You've been praying, Lord, let me be so saturated with your anointing when I lead people throughout this sanctuary that your presence will get on them. And you even said this, even the most hardened unbeliever, let me walk them to their seat and let the anointing on me get on them to soften, and you even said it like this, to soften them to receive the word. Fire! Double portion! Double portion! Fire! 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 She tabaka. God is getting this church ready for the end time on. questions and confusion about things, why things didn't happen, why, what, th what caused this, what caused that. The Lord says, I'm in control. Trust me. It may not look like it's working out the way we plan it, but the Lord says, when I am in it, it's for the good. Trust me. But I hear him say this. Devote yourself to an hour of prayer 
for 14 days. 14 days. Pick the time that you can make it happen. And when you make it happen, turn off everything in your house. Not even worship music. Go to the specific place and seek me for an hour. For 14 days. And by the 14th day, the hours will turn, hour will turn into hours. And I'm going to give you direction for your life. I'm going to give you direction for the lives of those ones that you spend all your time worrying about in their direction. And I'm going to give you the correct words to say. Words of my wisdom, words of my counsel, words covered with my anointing to get them back on the path that they need to be on. Peace. Peace. Peace in her mind. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. The words that come out of your mouth will speak life to others. In Jesus' name. Another usher. Do you realize as ushers and greeters you have the most important job in this church? You are the first impression people get of World Harvest Church. I still remember when I was going to World Harvest Bible College in Columbus, Ohio, there was this greeter named Willie, and he would stand in front of the door, and nobody got by without him shaking their hand and showing them that he was happy that they were there. And by the way that you ushers treat people is the reason in they find love in this church. But you have been praying to be able to be like the lady I prayed for there. So anointed and so full of the love of Jesus that you would even get, you even use the word, I would like to have your fragrance come out of me when I'm around people. And the Lord says, I am building something in this church. And I've given you this position. And this is the position you're supposed to be in. Because I'm going to do something through you for the ones that walk through the doors that don't even know why they came. But the way you walk them to their seat, the way you answer their questions is going to show them. Because some people are going to come through this door that don't think they can be loved by anybody. But the way that you love them, they're going to say, wow, maybe somebody can love me. Lift your hands. I thank you for an abundance of grace. I thank you, Lord, that you bless her with the fragrance of your love to pour out of her so that others will know the love of Jesus. And that the love she shows and the anointing that's on her life will, ha- will soften the hardest heart and make them ripe for the word that comes forth from behind this pulpit. Fire! <laughs> Peace. In Jesus' name. But there's another issue. There's things in your life around you that sometimes hover like a cloud and you don't know you don't understand why is this cloud there and I hear the Lord would say that I'm letting you recognize a cloud around you so that you can help others with the cloud on their life so that you go into the fire and come out and 
draw other people out of their fires. Everything I do to and through you is for a purpose of the kingdom. And I'm going to use you mightily. When the time comes, you will not be an usher, says the Lord. I have a calling for you. And you know what that is. But not until I say for it to come to pass. And when I say and you follow, my power, my fire will be there. And no man can question it in the name of Jesus. Spirit, come out in the name of Jesus. Peace. Peace in Jesus' name. You too have been hurt many, 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 many times. And you keep running to the Lord. And the Lord says, run to me. Run to me. Like Bartimaeus, throw off that coat. Let me determine who you are. Depression goes now in the name of Jesus. Anxiety and fear goes now. seen you before look at you though you're smiling oh my god hallelujah fire 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 stop fighting it fire and your head stop turning. The only thing on your mind should be Jesus. Fire! No confusing thoughts. Peace in Jesus' name. Peace beyond all understanding. Don't be anxious for anything. Prayer, supplication. With thanksgiving, make your requests known unto God. And I will give you a peace that transcends all understanding and guards your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Fire! Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord, that you give him more fire than he had before he came up here. Inferno! Look at me. Don't be so hard on yourself, bro. You hear me? Don't be so hard on yourself. We fall down, we get up. We're, we're Christians. We fall down, we get up. Devil knocks us down, we get up and kick him in the teeth. Amen? So don't let the most recent battle that wasn't so victorious for you alter your frame of mind. In your direction, 
because you are still more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. You are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. No matter what that devil says, you are a winner and victorious in Jesus Christ. Lift your hands. Fire! Fire! Free! We all lose battles, but Jesus wins the war. Fire! Free. Even right now, you're still thinking about that battle. We release that battle unto the Lord and say, Lord, I'm ready for the next one because I know the next one. I'll be like David and I will be victorious and I will stand upon the carcass of that defeated giant in my life and I will stand on it. I will cut its head off and I will raise it up and say, I am victorious in Jesus. Fire! Stop beating yourself up. listening because 